You ever wonder how much money some of these pro-Russian telegram channels make? No? Just me? All right. Well, we're going to get into it because BBC just a few days ago put out a pretty interesting article titled Putin Influencers Profiting from War Propaganda. And what they did was a couple of reporters pretended to be some random hotel and they reached out to folks like War Gonzo, who I'm sure plenty of you are familiar with, and asked what it would cost to advertise on their page because they're running ads sometimes every day or multiple a day even. So in turn, they got their rate and, and we're going to run through those. I, you know, I'm wondering if this is higher or lower than what you expected. But before we get into the actual rates, I do kind of have an issue with how this article is put together. You know, on the one hand, it's media, right? Like wherever there is attention, that's where ad money is going to go. Before a presidential election, you'll see a lot more ad money. The money is going to be spent more heavily on news organizations covering the presidential election because eyeballs are there, right? If there's a natural disaster, it's the same thing. Eyeballs flow towards that. Ad revenue increases. The other side of this is there is still kind of an ongoing debate around, you know, how actually independent some of these mill bloggers are. You know, it's, there have been some, including War Gonzo, a couple of these are pretty, pretty rough. They put out some pretty rough stuff at times, but others have, have criticized Putin and the Kremlin before. So it's, again, kind of an ongoing debate. How much of what they put out is state directed versus state sanctioned or you know there there is an argument that some of these guys are able to just kind of go as they wish because it you know builds support from the population and lets them see the war through another lens so i think calling these guys outright putin influencers might be you know skewing the perception a little bit they're definitely more state aligned than what you would see in the west but nonetheless let's dive right into it so what we're going to do is look at each one of these channels. There's uh, five of them. Talk about their subscription count on Telegram, how much they make per post on Telegram, and then how much that would be if they had that same following on Twitter or X. I feel like I'm always going to call it Twitter. And I know Telegram to Twitter is not a perfect one-to-one, -one, but if you're thinking about the Telegram app, it's primarily text-based. If anybody hasn't played around with it, Primarily text-based, there is you know the ability to upload relatively long video and, and pictures, but I, I think the closest comparison in the U.S. is probably Twitter, more so than Instagram maybe, but Twitter first and foremost. So that's what we're going to compare to U.S. ad rates on Twitter for the same following. So the first one we've got here is Alexander Yarmachuk. Uh, he has 80,000 subscribers on Telegram and charges $110 for a sponsored post on that platform. Now these, when it was reported, it was in rubles, but the conversion right there now is just like absolutely silly. So we're going to talk in US dollars. That same following, if he had 80,000 subs on Twitter, followers on Twitter, he could charge $6,000 for a post, which that's not, you know, it's not bad money. Somebody putting the ad out every single day. And if you follow any of these channels, these aren't like one post or two posts a day kind of thing. These guys are just constantly flooding the net. And we're going to move up here as we go. So more subs, higher price point. War Gonzo is going to be the last one. It's it's substantial. Next up is Alexander Simonov, uh, who has 160,000 subscribers on Telegram. He charges, or he would have charged, this fictional hotel company, $225 per post on Telegram. That, according to impact.com, I don't really, look, I've got like 2,000 followers on Twitter, so I'm not the person to ask about ad rates over there. But according to impact.com, they say in 2023, that same number of followers would net about $10,000 for a sponsored post. Now, I did say I don't really, I haven't really done, I, I enjoy Twitter. I think it's a good way to keep up with things. I do post ads here on YouTube from time to time. I'm sure you, if you've watched the channel for very long, you've seen those. A general, you know, rough estimate ad rate on YouTube is roughly, it's not tied to subscribers, it's tied to usually historical views. $15 on or about for every thousand views over your last, you know, 10 videos or so is ballpark. Some are higher, some are lower, but if you're trying to, you know, if somebody were to, you know, on average get a million views on every single video they put out, they could reasonably expect $15,000 for an ad post, for instance. But moving on, sticking with the Telegram and Twitter comparison here, Gray Zone, which look, of all of these, Gray Zone puts out some pretty sketchy stuff at times. Uh, and it's not, there's like a U.S. company called Gray Zone that's also kind of on the edge. That's not them. Uh, this is a, a, a Russian organization titled Gray Zone. It's pretty big. 611,000 subscribers on Telegram. They charge 
$320 per post on Telegram, which seems like a steal. I don't know. Um, but if that they had that same following, over 600000 on Twitter, it would quickly jump up from $320 on Telegram to $20,000. There's a lot to unpack here, like why the ad rates on Twitter are so substantially more. I don't know what the user count is on each. Um, obviously, Telegram, especially these creators, are catering to a very Russian audience. So you have to take that into consideration. It's going to be mostly Russian companies or companies that do business in Russia able to advertise there. Um, but holy cow, right? These are substantially more on Twitter. Alexander Kotz is the next one. Similar size to Gray Zone, 620,000 subscribers on Telegram. He charges a little bit more than Gray Zone, $850 per sponsored post, if that's the right way to call it. So again, if he were over on Twitter, you know, roughly on or about $20,000. And again, as you're looking at that number, either way, whether you're looking at Telegram or Twitter, remember that these guys are publishing on average, about one sponsored post a day, they're pinning to the top of their Telegram channel usually. So for Alexander Kotz, if he's charging $850 per sponsored post on Telegram, that's what, roughly, it's, it's north of $25,000 per month, right? I mean, these guys are posting every day. And if it was on Twitter, holy cow, you know, $600,000 per month in sponsored posts. That's, that's, Jesus. All right, and the big one. War Gonzo, who, for anybody who's on Telegram or trying to follow the war in Ukraine via Telegram, War Gonzo is actually somebody I, I think is worth following. He's you know absolutely a, a pro-Russian commentator. He's embedded with Russian troops. But all things considered, he tends to give you know relatively accurate assessments from the front. When things start to unravel, for instance, in past battles, his account tends to be one of the earlier ones that says, hey, we're having problems over here. And then eventually over time, the official Russian statements will come out. Um, you, know, you know what you're getting into when you check out War Gonzo. It's 100% from the Russian perspective to a Russian audience. Um, but again, if you're looking for another perspective, if you're mostly following things in English language or Ukrainian channels or American channels, whatever it might be, War Gonzo, again, just keep it in the back pocket. On Telegram, he's huge. The guy's got 1.2 million subscribers and he charges $1,930 per Telegram post. So, you know, what's that? $60,000 a month, US dollars? That's going to go a long way in Russia. That's that's a pretty substantial income the dude is making. And I'm sure he's probably got the amount of content and the quality of some of it suggests that uh, War Gonzo has a team. I don't think this is a one-man show. He's not an individual influencer, if you will, running around the battlefield. But when you move that audience, 1.2 million, talking about a hot topic that has people engaged and they're, they're going to you for the updates and you're their person to let them know what's actually happening, right? As people inside of Russia, a lot of them would be looking to War Gonzo to do. If that audience was on Twitter, according to impact.com, it is $30,000 plus per post. It's not a perfect comparison. I got it. Twitter to Telegram. I just, you know, I think Twitter of all the social platforms here in the United States right now is probably like one of, if not the lowest ad rate based off of followers and engagement. So I thought it was at least worth starting there as opposed to Instagram, which is going to be quite a bit higher than this. Um, and then the content that these guys are putting out is more closely relatable to what you might see in tweet threads and things like that on uh, X, not Twitter, right? And just wrapping up here, you know, I'm not blind to the fact that I'm talking about Russian mill blogger ad rates on a platform where I could make ad revenue where I've done sponsored posts. You know, there's not one for this video, but there have been in the past. There probably will be in the future. So the purpose of this video isn't to put these guys on blast and call them out and say, how dare you work with sponsors? Because quite frankly, when it comes to that argument, I don't really have a leg to stand on, right? I'd like to think that the content I put out is a lot different than the people we talked about here today, especially Gray Zone, who's thrown out some pretty pretty wild conspiracy theories uh, over the last few months and years. But either way, I just thought this was a really kind of interesting look behind the curtain at some channels, really prominent Russian channels, that get quoted and cited pretty frequently in, uh, in, in Western media sources. I'll put a link to each one of the, their channels in the description below, as well as the source article. But that is all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.